Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to chapter 18. We're talking about phylum platyhelminthes this time, the flatworms. Platy means uh, flat. Uh, platy is like a plate. What is a plate like? A plate is flat. Helminth literally means worm, so the name literally means flat worm. Uh, they've got bilateral symmetry, which means they've got two equal sides, the left and the right side. And there's about 30,000 species of flatworms. Our first class, phylum platyhelminthes. We've talked about sponges, the peripherans. We've talked about the jellies and the darians. Now we're going to talk about the platyhelminthians. Our first class of platyhelminthians are the turbolarians. Um, there's not really a common name for turbolarians. They're just called turbolarians. Um, they have uh, bilateral symmetry because all flatworms have bilateral symmetry. About 4,500 species of the turbolarians. Um, in this picture up here at the top, this is a, uh, it's called planaria. Planaria is uh, a common turbolarian. Uh, this is the worm that when you cut it in half, the head will grow a new butt, the butt will grow a new head. Um, you can do like a YouTube search for uh, cutting planaria, and just there's thousands of experiments they've done cutting this thing in different ways to see how it will regrow the bits and pieces, and it, oh my goodness, it's got so many pieces. All right, so um, turbolarians themselves are all free-living. Let's explain that term before we go on, and that is that free-living specifically means it's not a parasite. How bad is the group that you belong to have to be that you have to, that your claim to fame is, hey, we're not parasites? Uh, pretty bad because all the rest of the groups of flatworms are all parasites. Um, Turbolarians have a head. Remember, we said that bilateral symmetry with bilateral symmetry usually comes some amount of cephalization. They've got a head. That head has a brain in it with eye spots. Um, Eye spots aren't eyes. They're not trying to see anything. They're simply just trying to detect light. I know it looks like it's cross-eyed. Mm, super cross-eyed worm. It's not actually cross-eyed because it doesn't have eyes. That's just how the eye spots are made. They don't move. They can't rotate at all. They're just a, a, a dip, a depression with uh, light detectors in it. They're just trying to detect light, whether or not light is there or not. Um, and... Uh, Usually when they do detect light, they want to swim away from it. Attached to that brain are two nerve cords running down the length of the animal. Two nerve cords. And then in the center of the animal is what's called its gastrovascular cavity. Gastrovascular, it means it's basically its intestines, but it's more than that. It's intestines and it's bloodstream, but it, they don't have blood. But this gastrovascular cavity is how everything gets transported back and forth within the animal. Uh, this is where the food comes in, and this is where the waste goes out. Uh, this thing hanging down right here, it's not a penis, it's actually called a pharynx. It's not part of its reproductive system, it is part of its digestive system. This is how food gets into the animal, it's what it uses to, to suck food up. And then that's also how the food gets out. Uh, they have what's called an incomplete digestive system. Incomplete digestive system means that the way in and the way out is the same. You have a complete digestive system. The way in and the way out are different, um, thankfully. Uh, they don't. They have an incomplete digestive system. Turbolarians, about 4,500 species. Our next class of flatworms is class Trematoda. These are the flukes. About 20,000 species of flukes, so two-thirds of all turbolarians are flukes. Um, they have very complicated life cycles. Uh, they're all parasites. They have really complicated life cycles, usually involving two or more hosts, like one life stage has to be in a snail, and then the next life stage has to be in a fish, and the last life stage has to be in a mammal. Really complicated life cycles. Uh, as we said, they're all parasites. This picture specifically is a liver fluke. This is a liver, specifically a deer's liver, that we see. This white pocket that we see in the middle of the liver is where the flukes themselves had been living. This is a fluke right here. There's another fluke right there. Both of these flukes had lived here 
within this pocket uh, inside of the liver. Imagine what it felt like to the deer for these flukes to dig out that cup that they lived in. I'm sure it was awful pain. This white pocket is all scar tissue. Um, liver flukes. Flukes are terrible. Ugh. Our last group of flatworms are the tapeworms, class cestoda, the cestodes. Um, tapeworms, where tapeworms found, if somebody's eating a lot of food, people say, what, you got a tapeworm? Tapeworms are found in the digestive system, they're found in the intestines. Um, about 6,000 species of tapeworms, not nearly as many species of tapeworms as there are uh, flukes. Um, they don't have a digestive system, which is kind of interesting. And, and the question would be, well, why not? Why don't they have a digestive system? And the answer is, well, where do you find them? You find them in the digestive system. Why don't they need a digestive system? Because they literally live within a soup of digestive food. They don't need a digestive system because they, they live in a digestive system. What they do is they just literally absorb the nutrients you would be taking in. Um, they have a head, but they really don't. This structure way up here and uh, in the corner, this is a blow up of what the animal's head looks like. That is not, those aren't eyes, that's not a frowning mouth. All this is, this structure is called a scolex. This is simply for attachment. These are suckers, like a, you know, like a, a, a dart, you know, uh, a kid's dart gun. These are the suckers like a dart, those are actually hooks, just like Velcro. Their job is to pierce into the wall of the intestine and then attach and keep it from getting dislodged. All right, so this structure right here, this is called the scolex. It is not a head. It is not for thinking. It's just for attachment. If we look really close in this picture, we can see little wrinkles. Those little wrinkles are actually the beginnings of the body of the animal. Um, you can't really see it in this picture right here, but with look at a picture of a tapeworm and what we see is we will see um, dozens of little boxes and the whole body of the animal is made out of dozens of these little boxes. These wrinkles are the beginnings of these little boxes and the boxes are called proglottids. A little, each little box is called a proglottid. Each proglottid is a self-contained, complete reproductive system, including male and female sex organs. They prefer to mate with another individual, which there would be more than one tapeworm inside of the intestines. They would prefer to mate with a different individual, but they can mate with themselves if they need to. Each individual little square, and if we look at this animal, this animal right here is made of dozens of little pockets, dozens of little squares, dozens of proglottids. And each square is a complete, uh, complete reproductive system. Uh, by the time it gets down here to the end of the animal, it's now just a packet of eggs. But up here, the, uh, the female parts will have sex with male parts, again, preferably from a different animal, and uh, fertilize the eggs, the eggs develop, and then the packets just break off from the end. And that is the whole life cycle of a tapeworm, and that is to reproduce um, and release eggs. And then the eggs come out with the feces, and so you'll see packets of, feces, packets of eggs, little white wiggling things, little packets of feces, uh, of eggs in the feces. Um, and that is it for the platycomanthians.